Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us. A week of historic mobilization of people from throughout the world calling for action to be taken on the climate crisis ended with a sobering bang. Warming oceans and global sea level rise has accelerated in recent years due to climate change. And if immediate action isn't taken, the straits could be dire. That's the conclusion of a report published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC as it's known, a collective body of climate scientists overseen by the United Nations. The title of the report is The Ocean and Cryosphere in a Changing Climate, 1,100 pages in length, 100 authors, 36 countries who contributed to this report. The report examines the impact global warming has had and will continue to have on melting glaciers, a process which causes sea level rise. Sea level rise in turn can leave coastal cities and island slates underwater with unfettered climate change in the future if it happens. The IPCC put it, put it this way in a press release about the report. Glaciers and ice sheets in polar mountain regions are losing mass, contributing to an increasing rate of sea level rise, together with expansion of warmer oceans. While sea level has risen almost globally by around 15 centimeters during the 20th century, it's currently rising at more than twice as fast, 3.6 millimeters per year, and accelerating, end quote. Unchecked, global seas could rise 60 to 110 centimeters by the year 2100. And at the hands of climate change, the report concludes, that translates to nearly over two and a half feet. It also portends warmer global waters, which can lead to damaged ocean ecosystems, and the potential for increased extreme weather events. Here to talk about all this, and unpack what this report means, what it could do to our ecosystems, and to people and all of us on this planet, are our two guests. We're here with Vera Roy, Leroy, excuse me, the Anchorage, Alaska-based lead scientist advisor for the Center for Climate Integrity, a project of the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development. And the other is Harjeet Singh, the global lead on climate change at the organization ActionAid. And he's based in New Delhi, but joins us from New York today. So let's just begin immediately here. And I, I want to kind of go to the cut of uh, the press conference announcing this report, uh, just to give people a sense of what was presented. This new IPCC special report highlights the urgency of prioritizing timely, ambitious, and coordinated action. Even if global warming is limited to well below two degrees, around one quarter of the near surface permafrost will thaw by 2100. What is at stake is the health of ecosystems, wildlife, and importantly, the world we leave for our children. So, you know, this is on the heels of the last report about the land masses on our, on our Earth, and now we're seeing the report on, on the rising levels of the sea. So, Vera, just, just to start here with, you know, we've heard a long time about rising sea levels, and, and every time there's a hurricane or, a, or an event, we talk about the warming oceans and the role that plays in all this. So talk about what, this, both of you, from your perspective, starting with you, the importance of this report. What did it bring out that maybe we all didn't know before and, and we, that, 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 that we need to pay attention to? Um, so one thing this report does is it updates uh, the rate of sea level rise. So we have been aware that the rate of sea level rise has been increasing. Um, but much of the data that we've been citing was from uh, a decade ago, a decade old. And this is an update to that. Um, and in fact, the rate of sea level rise has increased even further. Um, it also updates, um, it paints a big picture of the rate of ice loss, which is directly related to sea level rise. Uh, it's a broad and rather dire picture of the amount of sea loss that um, the Earth has undergone in the last decade. And that is also projected to increase in rate going into the future. So I'd say there weren't necessarily any large surprises in this, but it does um, solidify our certainty of what has been happening. We're not just making these observations anymore. We have data and statistics to back it up. Um, and our projections into the future are getting uh, better. And it sounds, Harjeet, better and more dire, as they said in the report. Yes, absolutely. And it issues a very stark warning that we have very little time 
to avert the crisis. Um, imagine at one degree temperature rise, the kind of impacts we are already seeing, you know, the way sea level is rising and people are losing hands. Uh, I have recently been to Sundarbans, uh, which is one of the mangrove systems shared between India and Bangladesh. And I have seen how people have already lost their homes. Uh, the place that I visited is known as Moshuni Island. And I could see that seventh embankment almost submerged. And people would show you a piece of paper saying, my land used to be there uh, several meters inside the sea. So people are, have already been experiencing these impacts. And the way rate of sea level rise has increased and what it is going to do to millions of people, particularly poor people in developing countries, I think it's, it's already an emergency-like situation which we all need to acknowledge. And now with data and science, there is no more ambiguity uh, and it demands urgent action. And this report coming on the heels of uh, UN Climate Action Summit, it makes it even more important what world leaders have to do. So Svero, I mean, I, I, as Harjit was talking about India, and I want to come back to that in a moment, you, as we talked before we went on the air, grew up in Alaska. Um, and, and so and I just get a sense of how this report speaks to what people in the northern part of this hemisphere are facing, what people are facing in Alaska, whether it's the fisheries, the melting glaciers, and what that really means in a, in a, for people living day to day. I mean, how do, you, how do you translate what you see here to the people that you live with? Oh, well, it's very applicable to all parts of Alaska. Um, you know, the city of Anchorage, which is Alaska's largest city by far, it's half the population of the state, gets most of its water from glacial melt. And our glacier is expected to be gone by the end of the century. Um, and so we need to locate a new water source. The indigenous communities along the coast of Western Alaska are being eroded, you know, six feet at a time, six feet of their shoreline just washes away in one big chunk in one storm, um, there are, you know, a dozen or so communities that are fighting for their lives as we are speaking right now, desperately trying to find the money to move their community inland because they're being eroded um, because there's no longer winter sea ice that is fast to the land. So they're getting pummeled by winter storms. So there are, uh, fisheries are, um, Fisheries are being affected. Unfortunately, there's been very little research in the um, in the deep blue sea side of the fisheries. We mm -hmm. know a lot about what's happening along the coast, um, but there's it's the ocean is still a little bit of a black box. We don't understand what's happening to our fish, our wild salmon, when they go out to the middle of the Pacific for two years of their lives. Um, and so our fish returns, you know, this year we had fish that were having heart attacks in our, you know, northern Alaskan rivers as they're trying to spawn because the water is 20 degrees warmer than it is on average. Heart attacks. Um, yeah, we had multiple instances of widespread salmon death due to heat and likely heart-related issues. So, I, so let's talk a bit about the, the, what you both find, and Harjit, I'll go to you first and come back to Svera here, but I, I, I'm, what you both find in this report that, that, that you think the world is not aware of, that we need to be aware of, and how you relate that to people so they, so they really understand it. Harjit? Sure. Um, I think what report, the report doesn't use that phrase, but let me, um, let me try to make that point. The report is also talking about the domino effect that the whole world hasn't recognized yet. One, in terms of ecosystems, you know, frozen lands now threaten to unleash even more carbon as they melt, which means, and that's what report has, has found, and that's the reason that the warming has increased even more. So these frozen lands, these glaciers, have been holding carbon for, for centuries. And now if they unleash more carbon, which means more warming, and it will lead to these glaciers melting much faster, which means leading to sea level rise even at a faster rate. Much more disastrous situation. Another domino effect that we need to 
understand as seas get warmer which means not only they are going to affect uh, land in terms of salinity or even swallow up um, meters and kilometers of land but warmer seas also means more hurricanes so another domino effect that you see in terms of impact on people their land their livelihoods which is going to drive lot more migration and that migration is now already happening in millions and if i give data last year uh, in 2018 16 million people in just 150 countries were displaced uh, due to weather related events and these are new displacements which means you know we keep adding number of displaced people every year so if sea levels are going to rise and we are talking about over 670 million people living on the coastline and in islands you add more numbers their life and their uh, homes are at risk and they are going to face that migration much more how are we going to deal with that with that situation that is something that the world has to be aware of and that's why we need to act even more urgently I want to close in a few minutes just talking about what that means to act what what actions have to be taken but Sphere I you know I'm 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 just curious as well as for you um I mean this is your day-to-day -day work as well but what in that report really hit you in ways that you weren't expecting that that was were greater than you thought that really kind of stood out to you Um you know I think what struck me was the fact that we still have a chance to uh reduce our emissions and um possibly prevent the loss of ecosystems around the world um we really there is still hope if we reduce our emissions now um to prevent enormous amounts of sea level rise you know we're talking the difference between 2 feet which will displace millions of people and 6 feet which would displace billions of people um billions. we're well over a billion um and you know by the year 2050 the population of people living in these regions that we're discussing the arctic mountainous regions and uh low lying coastal communities mm -hmm. that that will be 20% of the projected world population by then. So we're talking 20% of people living in these vulnerable communities um that will need to find different sources of electricity, they'll need to find different sources of clean drinking water, they'll need to move to higher ground, they'll need to move from their island states. Um so we still have time to prevent the absolute worst of this and and there's a very big difference between um you know the next 30 years of climate change uh and you know the possible worst case scenario so i i was left hopeful you what was the last thing you said you you were hopeful mm, yeah i um you know there this report makes no guarantees Right. but they do suggest that if we implement um if we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions now um and we strive to meet these IPCC goals that they've laid out in the last several years that we actually have a chance of fighting back we actually have a chance of preserving some of our coastal communities and um and our our you know preventing reducing the risk of um devastating marine heat waves which have been increasing and are projected to increase massively going forward so we our actions today can really make a difference in the not too distant future so i and arjee let me just conclude here with you and i mean i i i hear as far as a message of hope but that hope also means that there has to be a human political push to make that happen 
because people are recalcitrant. There may be, you know, when you, as I said before we went on the air, we look at the United Nations this week and you're in, at, in New York now, Harjeet, and you know, you had the President of the United States walking out of the climate meeting uh, with, we, after he was there for like barely 14 minutes. So, you know, this is, it's going to take, we can change it, but it's going to take a, to me, seems to me, a huge struggle to force that change. Yeah, so I, I'm also hopeful, and we all should be hopeful, but um, I, um, I'm hopeful with a caution, which is, uh, and with a warning, that we have to move much more faster and urgently. Uh, and let me also point towards a couple of concepts that the report talks about in a very guarded manner. Let's also recognize that the summary of this report, which goes to policymakers, is a negotiated document, which does not mean that it can use the it can reflect the level of findings or the urgency uh, that with which we need to look at the issues because it gets uh, negotiated. But let me let me talk about a couple of concepts very very quickly. The report talks about adaptation limits, which means it points to a situation where adaptation, living in the same location, will not be possible for millions of people. It talks about residual impact, which in, in our climate lingo, we call it loss and damage. Mm -hmm. The report also talks about conflict resolution. We are already experiencing examples of conflict between displaced communities and host communities over scarce natural resources. So it very clearly says that we need to adopt conflict resolution approaches. So it can, it is anticipating that the world is going to see much more conflicts over scarce resources, particularly in developing countries. And we all know how the whole world is treating migration and, and the uh, xenophobic feeling around it. And the report also talks about planned relocation, uh, and which is where I would say we can be hopeful, provided we move uh, faster and in a, in a coordinated and manner with a lot more cooperation, and which is where the role of rich countries come in. How do you help developing countries go for that planned relocation provide how rich countries provide resources because developing countries are the ones who are going to face most impact. Uh, and that's the reality. And they are the ones who are least responsible. So yes, yes, we need to be hopeful, but we need a lot more to, to remain hopeful. Harjit Singh and Zvera Leroy, A, let me say thank you for joining us and B, for the work that you do. And we need to continue to keep our hope up and the struggle going to save our planet for the future and for all of us. Thank you both so much for joining us and I look forward to taking a deeper dive into this with both of you at some point soon. Thank you. For, thank you for being with us. Thank you. thank you. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. And you know our Climate Bureau will stay on top of all of this and bring you as much as we can, as much depth as we can. Take care.